Hey guys, what's going on? Counterspell Hater here, but another video. Uh, today we'll be doing another guide, this one being over Chatterfang from Modern Horizons 2. Let's get started. So Chatterfang, Squirrel General, two generic, green, legendary creature, Squirrel Warrior, Force Walk, 3-3, three, three, meaning that if your opponent controls a force, uh, this cannot be blocked. Um, if one or more tokens would be created under your control, those tokens, those tokens plus that many 1-1 one, one green squirrel creature tokens are created instead. And then for a singular black, you can sacrifice X squirrels. Target creature gets plus X minus X until in turn. So what, with this commander, you can both buff and kill creatures because of the minus X. And this works on indestructible because the creature having zero toughness will die. And even though indestructible creatures cannot die via damage or destroy spells, they can die via, they can leave the battlefield via exile or return to hand or put back on top of the library or by having no toughness at all even without being dealt damage. So this works. So what this deck wants to do is create a lot of tokens, obviously. I'm going to start off with our only squirrel payoff in the deck. A squirrel mob, one generic, double green, two to squirrel, two to, it gets plus one, plus one for each other squirrel on the battlefield. And that is in general, meaning if your opponent has squirrels, this is going to be getting pumped up for however many schools they have as well. Now let's get into uh, token creators. Well, and also I guess token slash token payoffs. So one of them be, I guess our only token payoff, I think this is uh, Wayward Swords Sword Tooth. Two generic and a green for a dinosaur ascend. If you control 10 or more turns, you get the city's blessing for the rest of the game. Five, five. They play an additional land on each of your turns, so it allows us to ramp and it can't attack or block unless we have the city's blessing. And because we're running a token stack, most likely we will. Next is Avenger of Zendikar. Five generic, double green. Elemental 5-5, five, five. when enters the battlefield, create an 01 green plant creature token for each land you control. Landfall, whenever land enters the battlefield under your control, you may put a plus and plus account on each plant creature you control. So, along with the plants are getting, rolls getting squirrels. Same with Tyler's Tracker to go in union with uh, Avengers of Zendikar. Because for two generic and a green, it's human scout 3 2, whenever land enters the battlefield under your control, investigate. Put a colors. Clue artifact token onto the battlefield with two generic sacrifices artifact, draw a card. And whenever you sacrifice a clue, put a post to post account on Tyler's tracker. Replicating ring, another token creator from Call Time, a new set, uh, relatively new, not very new, but three generics, no artifact. Tap, everyone may have any one color. At the beginning of your upkeep, put a night counter on Replicating ring. Then if that has eight or more night counters on it, remove all of them. And create eight color snow artifact tokens named Revocated Ring with tap, add one mana of any one color. I mean, and on top of those eight Revocated Ring tokens, you're also getting eight one one squirrels. Pitless Plunderer. Pitiless, I think. No, Pitless, I think. Yeah. Pitless Plunderer. Three generic and black. I was about to say green. Human Empire, 1 4. Creature. Whenever another creature you control dies, create a colors treasure artifact token with tap sacrifices artifact at one minute of any one color to your mana pool. And you are also getting squirrels along with that. And this is not non token. So keep that in mind. Root Hatch Nantuko. One generic and a green insect druid, one one. Whenever it is dealt damage, you may create that many one one green insect creature tokens, more cost of two generic and a green. You may cast this card face 
down as a 2 2 creature through a free generic turn face up any time for its morph cost. Nightmare Shepherd, two generic, double black, when uh, not legendary. Enchantment creature, though. Demon, 4 4 flyer. Whenever another non 2 creature control creature you control dies, you exile it. If you do, create a token that's a copy of that creature, except it's a 1 1 and it's a nightmare in addition to its other types. And you're also creating a scroll. Blah. Uh, second harvest. Two generic and double green for an instant. For each token you control, create a token that's a copy of that permanent. So along with that, you're going to be creating that many more squirrels. Some of the host. Four generic legendary artifact equipment. At the beginning of combat on your turn, create a token that's a copy of Equip creature, except the token isn't legendary if equip creature is legendary. That token gains haste, equip cost of five, meaning you can now have multiple shatter fangs, which will create you many more squirrels. So you have two, then every time you create a token, you create two one one green squirrels. You have three, well, you know the deal. And then we add parallel lives to that equation and things go nuts. Uh, three generic and a green enchantment if, it, if an effect would put one or more tokens onto the battlefield under your control or cause you to create tokens. Uh, still works either way. It puts twice that many of those tokens onto the battlefield instead, meaning you're creating double the squirrels that you would be. And then doubling season does that, but also if an effect would put one more counters on a parent you control, it puts twice that many counters, that many of those counters on that parent instead. So keep in mind that with things like replicated ring and others like plus plus of counters, so like Avenger of Zendikar, this not only creates double tokens, but also uh, double the counters you put on permanents. Next is Dark Salvation. Uh, double X in the black, sorcery, target player. <laughs> X, 2-2, two, two, black zone, creature tokens on the battlefield. Then up to one target creature gets minus one, minus one, and someone turn for each zombie that player controls. So a great kind of removal spell but also a great way to get a lot of tokens out and squirrel tokens, just like pest infestation. Again, double X except for green. Sorcery, destroy up to X target artifacts and or enchantments. Create twice X, one, one, green, I'm black and green, pest creature tokens with, whenever this creature dies, you gain one life. So on top of twice that many being created, you're also creating that however many squirrels. So good card. Cheer Spitter. Uh, two generic and a green. This is a sac this is more of a sacrifice card, but oh, this is also a scroll payoff and a creature token creator. So at the beginning of your upkeep, you may sacrifice a token. If you put an acorn counter on Chitter Spitter, scrolls you control get plus one plus one for each acorn counter on Chitter Spitter. And then for green, you can tap, create a 1-1 one, one green squirrel creature token. Nice. Helps you sacrifice some of those tokens. Also boosts up your squirrels. Next is gelatinous genesis. Double X and green. So she put X, 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 green ooze creature tokens onto the battlefield. So on top of making an, an army of big buff ooze tokens, however big they may be, you're also creating that many squirrels. Right, no Genesis, two generic and a green, instant put X1 to green spider creature tokens on to, with reach onto the battlefield, where X is the number of creatures attacking you, prevent all damage that would be dealt this turn by non spider creatures. So, a good way to save your life and create a lot of squirrel creature tokens and creature tokens in general, and possibly even end the game on the next turn or hold back if need be. 
King Macaw, the gold curse. Two generic, the black legendary creature human. Two three inspired. Whenever, whenever he becomes untapped, you may exile target creature. If you do, put a colorless artifact token named gold onto the battlefield and has sacrifice this artifact and one many of being one color to your hand pool. So and then you're also creating the scroll, but nice removal while creating tokens. Next is Scoot Swarm. Two generic and a green creature insect. One one. If you haven't seen this thing on my channel, pause the video, go watch some of my crazy elemental videos that I've posted, and you'll understand and you'll probably just skip this part. But for those who have chosen not to, landfall. Whenever land is about to under your control, create a one one green insect creature token. I know it, it may it may be blurry, but it's fine. If you control six or more lands, create a token that's a copy of Scoot Swarm instead. Um, so, yeah, so, uh, so this can get really out of hand. Like I said, go watch some of the crazy elemental videos I post. Like, they've even helped me crash the game in one of my episodes. Check that out. Google Caller Giza. Three generic and double black. Legendary creature, human, and wizard. For black, you can tap sacrifice another creature, put X. Two to black on creature tokens on the battle. Wax is the sacrifice creature's power. Three four. So what you can do is is pay one black to Shatterfang Scroll Scroll General and make something really big and then sacrifice it to Giza here. To create even more zombies and even more scrolls. So nice combination. Verdant Force, five generic and triple green creature elemental seven seven at the beginning of each upkeep. Create a one one green sapling creature token. So a nice way to develop board state over the turn cycle. And then when it comes back around to you, most likely in a four way, you'll have uh, six more tokens ready to go. Uh, eight tokens in total because it's each upkeep. So a nice way to develop board save over the game. Uh, empty the pits, double X, quadruple black, instant delf. Each card you exile from your graveyard while casting this spell pays for one generic. <laughs> Excuse me. Put X, two, two, black time and creature show gets on to the battlefield tap. So if you have like some stuff dying or you just have a lot of cards in your graveyard or someone's being annoying and milling you or you just have a lot of mana lying around, even if you don't have those things, empty the pits can still be good. Uh, it just can help you create a lot of tokens in the late game. You'll probably be guessing this in the late game if I had to guess. Uh, not too bad. There's probably something better. Uh, like, mm, I don't know. Uh, maybe like near turbine, I guess. Uh, but it's not too bad. Speaking of creation, however, it's very good. Uh, three generic and a green sorcery put a one one green insect. Creature token into play for each force you control. So for beacon of creation is its own library. So you're going to be getting this back eventually, or not, depending on how the game goes. Um, either way, you might be able to create a lot of one one green insect creature tokens along with one one green scroll creature tokens uh, with beacon of creation here more than once if you're lucky. But still, a nice token creator and it's turn four so you can get a board state going on turn four or you can wait because the amount of tokens that are one green insect creatures uh that you create depends on the amount of force you have when this when you cast this and if you kind of mess up you this will go back into your library for you to draw and get another chance Next, however, is Death Mutation, a rather expensive removal spell, but quite worth it if you know what to target. 
six generic and black and green, so eight total. Destroy target non black creature. It can be regenerated. Put X 1 1 green sapling creature's tokens onto the battlefield. Where X is that creature's converted mana cost? So there's something like a Galta or a, a Scary Crater Hoof Behemoth or a Stone Hoof Chieftain or a. Um, uh, Like, I don't know, like a really expensive creature out, Death Mutation will be worth the eight to cast because you'll be getting a good amount of tokens out of it, thanks to this and Shatterfang. Now, Primal Vigor, a uh, bit questionable, four generic and a green enchantment. If one more tokens would be put onto the battlefield, twice that many tokens, the, twice that many of those tokens are put onto the battlefield instead. So that goes in general. So that's for you and your opponents. Same thing with uh, plus and multiple counters. Uh, you could replace this, but it may not matter in the end because of how many tokens you're creating and how, and how many more tokens you're creating. But there's definitely something that could be better. Uh, like um, another card that creates a bunch of tokens. Uh, help me out here. Uh, oh, bio waste blob. There we go. Yeah, bio waste blob. Definitely a good card that could be added here. Probably should. Liliana, the last hope. One generic double black planeswalker. Liliana, three loyalties. What she comes in with. Plus one, again, blurry, but I'll read it to you. That's uh, so one target creature gets minus two, minus one until you, until your next turn. Minus two, put the top two cards of your library into your graveyard. Then return a creature card from your graveyard to your hand. So nice reanimation if you need it. Not entirely reanimation, but get back to your hand at the least. Minus seven, again, emblem with at the beginning of your end set foot. X two two black zombie creature tokens on the battlefield. Rex is two plus the number of zombies you control. So this emblem will start creating you an army, not because of how many zombies it's going to create, but also in combination with the squirrels you'll be creating. You'll be creating double the amount of tokens essentially because of Chatterfang. So this can get you an army fast. And if you can ultimate Liliana the last hope twice, prop to you because your opponent's screwed after that, like definitely. If they weren't screwed enough after the first ultimate. Hornet Nest, two generic and a green creature insect, O2, defender. When it is dealt damage, put that many 1-1 one, one green insect creature tokens with flying and death touch onto the battlefield. Very nice. Flyers with Death Touch are great. They allow you to get in. They have a, a form of evasion because your opponent is probably not willing to block with the, whatever few reach creatures or flying creatures, if they have any at all, uh, against like tiny one ones. And it's gonna, this is also going to probably create you a bunch of squirrels, depending on what it blocks. Block something with high power. Or if it's just dealt a bunch of damage, like your opponent plays a Star of Extinction, that's like 21 ones uh, that are flying in Death Touch. So, pretty good card. Zuri's Predation. Five generic and triple green sorcery. For each creature your opponent's control, put a 4 4 green beast creature token onto the battlefield. Each of those beasts by a different one of those creatures. So if your opponent has somehow more of an army than you, or you're not going to have enough uh, uh, creatures for the crackback and you're planning to attack, then this can uh, provide you what you need. Uh, not to mention get rid of low power creatures, anything like with toughness lower than four, will definitely die. And you'll 
have squirrels being created in the process that won't fight. So definitely a nice card. Mycolith, uh, probably one of the most, one of the cards I would definitely recommend in decks like these that like to sacrifice and also create tokens. So this is a sacrifice payoff and a token creator. So for three generic, it's double green, uh, creature fungus, four, four, devour two. As this creature enters the battlefield, you may sacrifice any number of creatures. This creature enters the battlefield with twice that many possible counters on it. And then you mix in things like doubling season and primal vigor. And then this thing is stupidly huge. And also then you mix in uh, parallel lives and suddenly this creates you an army. Because at the beginning of your upkeep, Create one one green sapling creature token for each possible to count on Michaelis. So that can create you a stupid big army really quick. Not to mention, you're also creating that many one one green squirrels because uh, of Chatterfang. Next, we have token payoffs. Uh, Michaelis did would be counted for one of them. Starting with Tosuki, Bearer of Secrets. Three generic and a green. Let's say creatures are squirrel. One, one. This spell can be countered. Nice, indestructible, amazing. Attacks each combat if able. Not too bad because it's indestructible. And whatever creature you control deals combat damage to a player, draw a card. So you've got card draw uh, potential within your army, allowing you to keep on going, fueling your plan. And this is nice because it can't be countered and it's indestructible. I mean, all you could, all the more you could ask for is like protection or like hexproof. What do you, although you could ask for a champion of Lambolt, uh, one generic and double green for human, human warrior, one, one. Creatures with power less than champion of Lambolt's power. Can't block creatures you control. Whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, what a possible to counter on champion of those land bolts. Uh, well, so yeah. As you're creating tokens, your opponents are going to be having more and more problems because this is getting bigger and bigger. Uh, and creatures power less than champion of land bolts power can't block creatures you control. So if they don't manage to find some big creatures or some removal quick, they're going to die fast. Or if they're, you can just strike them when they're not prepared. With Crater Hoof Behemoth, five generic triple green creature beast haste five five. As you have to look creatures you control again, trample and get plus X plus X until on turn where X is number of creatures you control. In a mile of nowhere, trample and all, like plus 10, plus 20, or like plus 30, plus 30. Who knows how much? All I know is this is going to, this is for sure a token payoff in any deck. It's a big payoff because it can kill your opponents out of nowhere, especially if you have the army. Next is Vigor, three generic. Triple green, elemental incarnation, trample 6-6. Six, six. If damage would be dealt to another creature to control, prevent that damage. But plus to count on that creature for each one damage prevented this way. When it is when vigor is put into your graveyard from anywhere, shuffle it into its owner's library. So this will come back to you and it can put plus and to counters on your little one ones or whatever have you, making them buff and stupidly hard to block most likely because of what they're blocking. And then a really big token payoff, Phyrexian Dreadnoughts. I don't know if you've forgotten about this or not, but if you have, here it is. One generic from an artifact creature, uh, 1996 triple, whenever dread, Phyrexian Dreadnought comes into play, sacrifice any number of creatures with total power of 12 more or buried Phyrexian Dreadnought or sacrifice. 
12, 12 for one. Easy. You cast this at the right time, which is probably after commanders come out, or like you have 12 power or more within your creatures to be sacrificed to this, then this is an easy 12-12 for you. Like, come on. Uh, for one generic agreement, we have Cryptolith, right? A big uh, creature token payoff once again. Big payoff in general. Great card in the early game. Creature control have tap, add one mana, be one color, two mana pool. Just make sure they aren't summoning sick, and this can really propel you into the early game. Right? Propel you into the game in the early game. I think that's how it goes. You get what I mean? You'll be able to cast even more spells than what you would have been allowed, and eventually you'll get to a point that you won't have any cards in your hand. But that's what Fraley's Land Wars Fury is for. Three generic, double green, Planeswalker Fraley's. She comes in with three loyalty. She can be your commander. Uh, plus two, put a 1-1 one, one green elf, druid creature token onto the battlefield with tap and green to your mana pool. Minus two, destroy target artifact or enchantment. And then minus six, draw a card for each green creature you control. So a nice way to draw a bunch of cards. She also creates you tokens, which again, it's just a payoff feeding into itself, making it an even bigger payoff because you're also creating 1-1 one, one green squirrel creature tokens because of Fraley's creating 1-1 one, one elf druid creature tokens. Nice. Uh, and now I think we get into sacrifice slash token payoffs. So these are token payoffs in the form of being able to sacrifice them. We first have Torgar, Famine Incarnate, six generic and double black, legendary creature avatar, seven, six. As an additional cost to cast a spell, you may sacrifice any number of creatures. The spell costs two generic less to cast for each creature sacrificed this way. When Torgar, Famine Incarnate enters the battlefield, plus one target player's life total becomes half their starting life total rounded down. Meaning that most likely you're going to be able to half your opponent's life total from like whatever it is currently to 20 in a matter of turns if this is in your hand with how many tokens you're creating. Like that's an easy like win possibly like get someone out really early. That's what we're talking about. Ravenous Squirrel. Uh, Hybrid black green, so green or black can be paid for this. One one, whenever you sacrifice an artifact or creature, put a plus one plus a counter on Ravenous Squirrel. One generic, one black, and one green. Uh, sacrifice another artifact or creature, you gain life and draw a card. So card draw, life gain, and putting counters on this. With the amount of tokens we have, we're going to want to be doing this. Next token payoff is. Dam, Dam, Damogoth Titan? Question mark? Uh, quadruple hybrid black green. Creature demon 1110 when it attacks or black sacrifice a creature. This is a busted card. I don't know what Wizards was thinking. I think they were thinking just, oh, sacrifice, put 1110 on it. Sure, call it a day. But seriously, that's broken in token decks, especially this one. <coughs> With how many tokens we're creating. So this will be staying alive for a long time. And it's 1110 for four mana. That's that's terrifying. Ethnon's altar. Three generic from artifacts. Sacrifice, sacrifice a creature. Add two. Uh, colors mana to your mana pool. So, once again, a lot more mana. Uh, Bloodsport Thrynax. Uh, two generic, double green, creature lizard, two two, devour one. As this creature enters the battlefield, you may sacrifice any number of creatures. This creature enters the battlefield with that many possible counters on it. Each other creature you control enters the battlefield with an additional X plus one plus one counters on it. 
where X is the number of plus one counters on the blood sport drying X. So your tokens, your L's, whatever have you, whatever creature tokens, because this does not say non-token creature. This just says plain creature. And this is another token payoff because you're able to sacrifice a bunch of creature tokens you may not need. Because there could be like a silent arbiter on the battlefield or a ghostly prison. Now also reach plus supposed to counter on it. That's also that made plus and plus of counters are being put on any creature that enters the battlefield in your control. So as you're creating a whole bunch of squirrels, or whatever have you, along with everything else, then they're also getting buffed up by blood sport Rhinox. Then there is a very iconic creature token payoff card, Skull Clan, artifact equipment. The creature gets my, plus one and minus one. When the creature dies, draw two cards, it could cost of one. Very iconic card in Commander, one of the um, most well-known Commander staples because of its card draw ability and how greatly it works with creature token decks. Not to mention specifically one ones. Or like anything with toughness one or less. Which would just so happen to be our squirrels that we're creating. So we can suddenly turn our squirrels into like two cards that are now in our hand. All the more better. Next. I believe, yeah, we're now getting into our final section, which is creatures dying slash sacrifice, as you can say. Uh, black market, three generic and double black. Uh, enchantment, when every creature dies, put a charge counter on black market. At the beginning of your pre combat main phase, Add a black to your mana pool for each charge count on black market. So as we're sacrificing, so we as we're sacrificing a bunch of creatures, black market is getting charge counters put on it because of our commander's ability. So that's just gonna get us even more mana. Um and we can just, you know on our opponents instead of just sacrifice a bunch of scroll thanks to chatter chatter fang you know get rid of the creature if we want or buff one of ours up for whatever reason and put a bunch of charge counters in black market pretty nice all in all fashion of remembrance two generic in the black uh enchantment when it is about to create a one one white human soldier creature token whenever a creature you control dies each one loses one life and you gain one life so once again, allowing us to stay in the game, drain our opponents. So we can sit behind a wall of creatures and drain our opponents to their deaths. All in all, pretty nice. Uh, allows us to stay alive. Next is Bolas and Citadel. Three generic and triple black legendary artifact. You may look at the top card of your library at any time. Uh, you may play the top card of your library. If you cast a spell this way, you pay life equal to its mana cost, to its converted mana cost, rather than its mana cost, rather than pay its mana cost. Sorry. Tap, sacrifice 10 non-land permits. Each one loses 10 life. This will be easy because of how many tokens we're creating. And if need be, if absolutely need be, then we can start casting stuff for free, not to mention, uh, Bastion of Remembrance going nice in combination with this, along with other life gain cards that we have in this deck. Next is Sangir, the Dark Baron. Four generic, double black, legendary creature, vampire, noble, flying, four, four. Whenever a creature dies, put two plus and plus counters on Sangir, the Dark Baron. And this is any creature. So on the battlefield on your side, on the battlefield on your opponent's side, doesn't matter. Whenever another player loses the game, you gain life equal to that player's life total at the start as the turn began. So this can keep you in the game, but most importantly, it's going to grow at an alarming rate. So you can, what you can do is sacrifice a bunch of scrolls to Shatterfang's uh, ability and give the buff to Sangir because he will have a bunch of plus and counters on him. 
and most likely he'll still be alive, even though he'll be missing a lot of toughness. But still pretty good, nonetheless. And then you can just fly over, deal a bunch of damage if your opponents have any flyers to deal with your stuff or reach creatures. They may, but it may not matter. Spoils of blood. First thing you know, black, you have an instant that puts an XX black or creature shield down to battle for where X is the number of creatures that died this turn. So there has been a board wipe. Most likely you'll be playing this at instant speed after the fact to create a huge, huge uh, black horror creature token XX uh, and just kill someone on the spot next turn when it comes back to you. And not to mention, you, with you sacrificing everything and how much you're sacrificing, Spoils of Blood is just going to be generally good. So another big token payoff. Like this, seriously, this could wipe someone out if they're not careful. Mulder Vine Reclamation. Three generic, a black, a green enchantment. Whenever creature control, control dies, gamble life and you draw a card. And that's not non-token, so nice. Blood Artist, whenever it or another creature target player, uh, I mean, whenever another creature dies, and that's on any one's battlefield, target player loses one life and you gain one life. Oh, one for one generic and the black. So drain your pawns. And then we have a non-basic land, Fatal Passage, tap Sacrifice, Fatal Passage, Search your library for a basic land card, put it on the battlefield, tap and shuffle your library, then control four more lands, untap that land, Moss War Bridge, hide away. This land enters the battlefield tapped. When it does, look at the top four cards to your library. Exile one face down, then put the rest on the bottom of your library. Tap, add green to your pool. Green tap may play the exile card without paying its mana cost. If creatures you control have total power 10 or greater, total power. This doesn't just say 10 if a creature has 10, 10 power or greater. This is total power. So, most likely, you will be able to add, to cast whatever is hidden beneath Moss Ward Bridge because of how many creatures you will have, giving you the total power of 10 or greater that you need to activate Moss Ward Bridge's hideaway ability. Well, the ability that's associated with hideaway, sorry. Next is Myriad Landscape, and about to tap. You can tap it, add colors to generic, tap it. Sacrifice Myriad Landscape, search your library for the two basic land cards that share a land type, put them on the battlefield tap, then show your library. Uh, Blighted Woodland, tap, add a colors, three generic and a green, sacrifice, tap, sacrifice it, search your library for up to two basic land cards, put them on the battlefield tap, then show your library. Gaia's Cradle, tap, add a green mana to your mana pool for each creature you control. We're going to be having a lot of mana, thanks to that. Grim Backwoods, finally. Tap, add a colors, two generic, black and a green, tap, sacrifice a creature, draw a card. And then we have, um, okay. And then we have 22 forests and 22 swamps. Anyways, guys, that's gonna be it for this episode. Um, Counterspell Hater channel. Uh, hope you enjoyed. Hope you hope you enjoyed this uh, commander guideline video. Uh, let me know what cards you may replace, and if so, what cards you would replace those cards with. Um, love you all who are supporting me right now with via subscriptions. Uh, like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel if you're interested in more. Uh, hit the notification bell that way you don't miss another one. And share this video with others. You may have already said that, but I'll say it again just to be sure. Uh, love you all. Have a nice day. And I'll see you later. Goodbye.